By now, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two most popular cryptocurrencies in the world. The founder or founders of Bitcoin have chosen to remain anonymous, and though there's a lot of speculation as to who might have founded Bitcoin, the only thing that we know for sure is that the founder goes by the alias Satoshi Nakamoto. On the other hand, we know the founder of Ethereum, it's a guy named Vitalik Buterin. Unlike all the contenders for Satoshi Nakamoto, Vitalik isn't some 50 or 60 year old mathematician or programmer. In fact, Vitalik is only 27 years old today. Vitalik first entered the crypto scene at 17, he proposed Ethereum at 19, and he launched the darn thing at 21. Today, Vitalik is the world's youngest crypto billionaire, and he's already donated over $1 billion to charity. So here's the story of the child prodigy behind Ethereum. Taking a look back, Vitalik was born on January 31st, 1994 in Kolomna, Russia. He lived a lot of his early childhood in Russia, but most of his formative years were in Canada as his family moved there when Vitalik was 6. From very early on, it was clear that Vitalik wasn't an ordinary child. In 3rd grade, Vitalik was accepted into a program for gifted students. And many of his teachers were surprised by how talented Vitalik was in math and programming. Unfortunately, it looks like Vitalik fell into the stereotype of being a nerd that was not very social. Vitalik rarely took part in social gatherings and extracurricular events. Something that Vitalik was heavily involved in though was World of Warcraft. Between 2007 and 2010, World of Warcraft was Vitalik's favorite way to enjoy his free time. There's often a lot of stigma surrounding gaming as it's seen as a waste of time that offers little to no real life value. However, for Vitalik, World of Warcraft was actually a thing that would introduce him to the crypto space. The story goes that in 2010, Blizzard, the developers of WoW, removed the damage component of Vitalik's beloved Warlock Siphon Life Spell. This change made Vitalik extremely upset and he says that he cried himself to sleep that night. For the first time, Vitalik realized the downfalls of a centralized system. This distraught eventually introduced Vitalik to the cryptocurrency space the following year. When Vitalik was first introduced to Bitcoin, he says that he was quite skeptical like most of us. His primary concern with Bitcoin was that it didn't have any physical backing. How could nothing have value? But as Vitalik looked more into cryptos, he realized that the same argument could be made against fiat currencies as well. At 17, Vitalik got a job writing for a Bitcoin magazine called Bitcoin Weekly. He was only paid $1.50 per hour, but given that Vitalik wasn't in it for the money, he was okay with it. Also, something that should be noted was that Vitalik was paid in Bitcoin. The owner of the magazine paid him 5 Bitcoins per article, which was only worth $3.50 at the time. This means that Vitalik was roughly paid 2.14 Bitcoins per hour. In hindsight, I think we'd all agree that this wasn't bad at all. Unfortunately, Bitcoin Weekly eventually shut down due to insufficient revenue. But by the time the publication closed, Vitalik was able to build a name for himself in the crypto space. Thus, when a crypto enthusiast named Mihai Alisi started his own Bitcoin publication, Vitalik was one of his top choices. Mihai asked Vitalik to co-found Bitcoin magazine with him and become the magazine's lead writer. And with that, Vitalik would launch his first business in September of 2011 at age 17. This was nearly a full-time job for Vitalik as he would spend 30 hours per week researching crypto, writing about crypto, and working on other crypto projects. Despite putting so much effort into crypto, Vitalik didn't drop the ball on school either. Vitalik continued to be a top performer in high school, and he even won a bronze medal in the International Olympiad in Informatics in 2012. After high school, Vitalik enrolled in the University of Waterloo, but in college, crypto would start to consume his life. He was traveling around the world to meet with crypto experts and write about their perspectives and outlooks in his magazine. As he met with all these crypto experts, Vitalik started to notice a common set of complaints and pitfalls regarding crypto projects. Most cryptos were built for specific use cases and were not very applicable outside of their niches. Vitalik felt that this shortfall could easily be fixed by replacing the current protocols with the Turing Complete Programming Language. Vitalik proposed his idea to all of the existing projects that he had built relationships with, but none of them were really interested in the idea. So Vitalik decided to do it himself. In late 2013, Vitalik wrote about his idea for Ethereum in a white paper, which he shared with his crypto friends. His crypto friends then shared it with their friends, and in no time, a large portion of the crypto community was talking about the potential of Ethereum. The positive feedback was super encouraging, but Vitalik wasn't quite ready to make the jump. Yes, he owned a business and he probably had dozens of Bitcoin, but this wasn't really worth that much at the time. In an effort to get some funding, Vitalik would apply to the Theo Fellowship, which awards $100,000 to young people who want to quote, build new things instead of sitting in a classroom. 
And sure enough, Vitalik would win the $100,000. But this was nothing in comparison to how much they were about to raise. Vitalik, Mihai, Gavin Wood, and a couple of other crypto enthusiasts started work on Ethereum in January of 2014. One month later, Vitalik revealed a buffed up version of Ethereum at the 2014 Bitcoin conference. And a few months later, the team would hold an initial coin offering to raise more money for the project. I'm not sure how much money they were looking to raise, but it looks like they crushed their ICO. The team ended up raising a whopping $18 million by selling 31,000 Bitcoins worth of Ether. I don't think you'd be surprised to hear that Vitalik dropped out of college after this outstanding funding round. Over the next year, the team developed the bulk of Ethereum, and the platform would officially launch in July of 2015. Now, it should be noted that Ethereum itself is actually just a platform. The cryptocurrency that people generally refer to as Ethereum is actually called Ether. Anyway, while there was a lot of hype surrounding Ethereum's launch, it didn't take long for obstacles to arise as well, with the first major hurdle being the DAO attack. In 2016, a decentralized autonomous organization, or a DAO, raised money in order to create a venture capital firm based on Ethereum. This was one of the most hyped projects at the time. In fact, it was so hyped that 14% of all Ether in circulation was invested into the DAO. This translated to roughly $150 million. Less than three months after its launch though, the DAO would be hacked and $60 million was stolen. A code exploit in the DAO's wallet smart contracts could be leveraged to drain the funds in the DAO's wallet. This was a life-threatening issue as this massive security issue cast out on Ethereum as a whole. It's very possible that Ethereum could have gone down with the DAO attack, but Vitalik was determined to prevent this from happening. At first, Vitalik proposed a soft fork. With the soft fork, previously valid transaction blocks could be made invalid. But Vitalik needed the support of the majority of miners in order to complete the fork successfully. After hearing about this plan, the hackers fired back claiming that it's not their fault that there was a security issue and the funds they stole were quote unquote, obtained through fair means. The hackers threatened that they would bribe miners using 1 million Ethereum and prevent a soft fork from being completed. As a result, Vitalik was forced to consider a hard fork. A hard fork is when a substantial change is made to a blockchain network, and miners and users have the option of following the original path or the new path. Vitalik could reimburse the investors using tokens on the new protocol, but this was extremely controversial. Cryptocurrencies were supposed to be free of a central authority, and a hard fork would clearly violate this principle. Nonetheless, Vitalik executed the hard fork on July 20th, 2016, and this is why there are two major Ethereum tokens today, Ethereum Classic or ETC and Ether or ETH. This allowed Vitalik to return all the money that was stolen to the investors using the new ETH token. The hackers retained control of the ETC coins they stole, but given that everyone was dumping ETC, their stake had watered down to $8.5 million. That's still quite a substantial amount, but I don't think Vitalik could have really handled the situation any better. Since then, Vitalik has tried to be more proactive with updates to Ethereum, and that brings us into their latest development, Ethereum 2.0. Ethereum 2.0 is designed to reduce energy consumption, transaction costs, and transaction speeds of Ethereum. The key to accomplishing this is switching from the proof-of-work model to the proof-of-stake model. I have a full video explaining the difference between these two protocols and why the proof-of-stake model is superior. But in essence, the proof-of-work model is when miners buy a crap ton of equipment and try to verify transactions through brute force. This method not only requires a significant amount of energy, but most of the energy used to mine crypto is wasted on brute force. In contrast, in a proof-of-stake model, transactions are verified by individuals who own a large amount of the given crypto. The idea is that these people will be truthful while verifying the transactions, given that they wouldn't want to sabotage their own investment. People who try to abuse the system will either be fined or even banned from staking again depending on the severity of their violation. By switching to proof of stake, Ethereum will be able to eliminate the large energy consumption required for mining. Ethereum 2.0's first phases already started rolling out in December of 2020, but the full transition isn't expected till sometime in 2022. Many people think that Ethereum 2.0 will be the catalyst that propels Ether ahead of Bitcoin in terms of market cap, but only time will tell how that plays out. As for Vitalik today, we don't exactly know what all of his crypto stakes are, but his net worth is estimated to be somewhere between $1 billion and $3 billion, which makes him the world's youngest crypto billionaire. Vitalik hasn't been shy when it comes to sharing his wealth either. For example, in May, Vitalik donated $1.14 billion worth of Shiba coins to India's COVID relief fund. With that type of heart, I think Vitalik more than deserves all the success he's enjoyed so far. Do you guys think Ether will overtake Bitcoin? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you're bullish on cryptocurrencies long term. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, 
I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.